thank you uh, audience for your time in attending this webinar today but today's webinar's focus is primarily towards you know the different strategies one can follow to uh, uh, to to get the loads to extract loads component loads okay so this is the motion view interface this is our multi body you know pre processor uh, this is motion view what we have inside motion view is something known as an assembly wizard which is nothing but a set of um, uh, subsystems that can be used uh, to assemble for example a half car or a full car okay and what I'm going to do real quick here is I'm assembling together a half car system now once I have the the half car assembled from the interface the interface also exposes me to a set of different tasks that I can use to plug in so as I said you know one of the uh, common things that people try to do especially upfront in their uh, in their design process when they don't have realistic loads from the from the testing department is to use what is known as static load analysis template which you know which is basically a quasi static simulation uh, to study the effect of various load cases applied either at the wheel center or at the uh, or at the tire patch so in this case i just loaded a static load analysis uh, event now I can add different, uh, for example, load cases to this. So one of the, uh, I mean, some of the common G loads could be, you know, G loads representing braking in forward and reverse, uh, you know, G loads in cornering, suspension rolling, bottoming out conditions, so on and so forth. So this uh, table-like interface, you know, we call it forms, allows you to basically define additional load cases. So if I say add, I can add, uh, you know, for example, uh, a second load case to my system. I can, for example, call it my 4 aft load case. So I'm just naming this as 4 aft. I can either apply the static load on the tire patch or on the wheel center. So let's say I'm going to stick to a wheel center left and a wheel center right in this case. I can specify the direction of force that I want to apply. So I can either apply it on the translation x, y, z directions or I can apply it in any of the three rotations. So let's say I'm going to stick to x for now. You can either apply this as a load or as a displacement. Uh, I'm going to leave it uh, to defaults. This is your multiplier. So for example, if you want to apply a 3G load in z uh, of this value, then you just uh, change the multiplier value from 1 to 3. And then you specify, you know, a, a value that you want to apply as an input, or uh, input force in this case. Now, as I mentioned, uh, this is a quasi-static simulation. So when you run a static load analysis, to begin with, a static simulation would be performed with all the active loads belonging to, uh, for example, a load case. Now this is followed by resetting the set of loads in the load cases and the next set of load cases would be applied. So if you have, for example, three different load cases, you will have three uh, repetitions of, of this quasi static car simulation happening. So once you have these load cases set up, you can then run the model. Um, again, real quick, I'm, I have a few more things to show. So let me call it static loads demo. So I can now run the simulation and once the simulation is complete, when I click on animate, it would bring up the, the animation client which is Hyperview. It would load the result for me. I can now, for example, contour the, uh, uh, the, the reaction forces and now I can animate the model. So I can also show the, uh, the reaction forces based on the input. So this is, you know, one way or this is probably an easier way to start with in order to perform, uh, uh, for example, uh, a static load analysis. Now another approach is for you to plug in uh, a test rig, you know, like a four post test rig and apply acceleration or displacement or even forces directly on the spindle to, uh, you know, to, to study the, the, the reaction loading characteristics. So again, in order for you to do that, we have easy to use interfaces. We have a pre-built uh, set of models in our wizard, 
So instead of a front end of a vehicle, if I select a full vehicle as an example, um, I can now choose, for example, vertical spring tires, which would enable me to load a four-post uh, test rig later uh, during the, the analysis event. So I have the model loaded. I can now go to the analysis menu, and I can select my four-post analysis. Now, once I have the, uh, the four-post analysis plugged into the model, as you can see here, now this, this is a demonstration um, uh, example. So I have a set of four curves that I use as an input to my jack motion. So I'm applying a displacement motion here to my, uh, uh, to, to my vehicle, and I'm using the curves that I just showed you as, as an input to this. Now, one of the common things that you would uh, encounter when you apply these vertical actuations is the, the drift. So there can be a tendency for your vehicle to, to drift along you know, the X or say the, uh, the Y direction. So you need some restrained forces to, that would prevent you know, the, the vehicle from drifting. And the, the test rig that you can use from motion view comes with a ready to use uh, restraint forces that uh, that can be fine-tuned if you wish at, at, at a later stage but basically we use a bi stop function which means we are tracking the displacement along a certain direction and we are we are specifying a bound we are specifying two limits a minimum and a maximum limit and based on this limit there is there is a stiffness and a, and, and a damping function that gets applied to prevent the vehicle from uh, you know from restraining so we have these restraint forces model. So once I plug in my four post uh, analysis, I can now run it in motion solve. So this is going to be a transient event. So if I look at my event, it would first run a static simulation. It would deactivate the, the joint primitives in the model. And then it would run a transient simulation for 10 seconds. So I can now run my simulation. So I, I go to the run panel, I click on run, it brings up the motion solve command prompt. Uh, it's now running a transient simulation. So as you can see here, it's marching ahead in time. Um, seven seconds up, eight, nine, and 10. So the analysis is now complete. As you can see here, the analysis is fairly uh, fast because we are only dealing with a handful of uh, degrees of freedom. So now I have uh, the animation client, which is Hyperview open here. So I can animate the model. I can, for example, uh, contour for the reaction forces. Uh, one other thing I can do is I can quickly go back to my multi-body model. I can add a request. For example, if I add a request requesting for forces on my vehicle body, and rerun the simulation. Motion solve would extract what is known as a meta file. Now, this meta file essentially contains the the needed loading conditions or, or the the necessary uh, load histories at the at the desired connections on all the connections on the vehicle body. So now, if I go back and uh, apply the results once again and contour the the forces. and animate the model, you will see that I have the, the reaction forces on all the connections in the model. So connections meaning, you know, for example, a spring or a bushing or a joint and so on and so forth. So now, once you run your multi-body simulation where you, for example, applied your acceleration data or you have, for example, managed to convert the accelerations to displacement and apply that as an input or maybe apply forces directly on the on the on the spindle so once you have uh, provided this as an input and run a multi body simulation you have a set of loading histories now if you want to extract the or cascade the loads from motion view or from the multi body environment to you know to perform for example an inertia relief analysis you can make use of tools or utilities such as load export so if I go to the Flex Tools menu and click on Load Export, it would bring up this module here. As I said earlier, when you request for, for example, body forces, um, Motion View would export a meta file. 
So once you open the meta file, you would notice that you have your vehicle body and you have all the, you know, the, the available connections that are available for you to further extract reaction forces on. So you can either select all the, uh, uh, all the connections or you can just select a few and define or declare how many time steps of force or, and moment information would you like to export or if you want to declare or extract the forces in all the steps, you can say all steps and apply. And once you apply this, you have this export option that gets enabled. So you can now export these uh, in order, you can export this information as uh, as load cards in your planet element model. So now I can click on NAST and options. Here I specify, for example, the, the node IDs, uh, which are nothing but, you know, the, the attachment locations for my uh, finite element model. I apply and now the export option gets enabled or activated. So I can say loads and it, it's actually going to save a DAT file. So I save this, I close and if I come to see the DAT file uh, that has the that has the, force and the, the needed force and moment um, histories uh, for every uh, desired you know, time step. So this is, in my opinion, one of the, one of the straightforward ways for you to take the, the forces from a multi-body simulation back to your finite element model to perform, for example, a unit load analysis or, uh, uh, or so on and so forth. So this is the second flow. A third flow can be to run your virtual proving ground events, right? And as I said earlier, uh, Motion Solve has the ability to uh, to not only model the multi-body system but also model the, the needed tire and road uh, data. So, for example, if I build a full vehicle system with tires this time uh, instead of a vertical uh, sprint tire, I can plug in, for example, different events. So if you go to the task wizard, I have these different events that I can use as an input. So let's say I take a straight line acceleration event as an example. So I can plug in my straight line acceleration event. I have different controls that I can use to, uh, you know, specify the full vehicle properties, uh, for example. If I go to the, uh, the tire uh, properties or the tire data set, you can see here that it's referring to a tire property file and it has a road definition file. So if you are, for example, if you have your own road definition file that has the, uh, that has the tessellations or that has the, uh, the roughness characteristic that you would like your multi-body model to be subjected to, you can change your road definition file through this data set and you can run your simulation in, in motion solve. 